My name is Marco Hyvonen and I'm giving you a, a whistle stop uh, tour of a paper that just came out from our lab as part of a large collaboration between labs Otton Blundell, Ashok Bengtra and, and, and Chris Abel. This is it was a big Wellcome Trust funded signaling drug discovery project where we developed uh, inhibitors for human recombinants RAT51. The project was coordinated by John Skidmore and uh, Trevor Perrier, who was our uh, drug discovery advisor uh, for the duration of the project. The project was led in the major stage by Professor Chris Abel from the chemistry department, but unfortunately Chris died very unexpectedly uh, last autumn while this manuscript was being uh, reviewed, and we had dedicated this paper to Chris's memory. He was a very good colleague of ours and a great friend as well. The inspiration for this work comes from some 20 years ago now, when Luca Pellegrini, still as a postdoc in Top Blundell's lab, determined the structure of human RAT51, a recombinase, in complex with the BRC repeat from BRCA2. The structure here with the blue BRC repeat bound to the wrapping around the surface of the RAT51 is a critical in interaction for homologous recombination. If we were to develop orthosteric inhibitors that prevent this uh, interaction, we would predispose cells to radiation damage or potentially uh, create uh, synergy between other DNA repair inhib inhibitors, such as PARP inhibitors. If we look at this uh, structure a little bit more, in this movie here you can see how now the green BRC repeat peptide, as a little worm uh, here, wraps around RAT51 and the key epitopes that we are targeting are these highlighted in red. What binds there is a conserved FXXA motif. This is found both in all the BRC repeats, but it's also the same sequence that is found in RAT51 itself, mediating self-association of RAT51 as part of its function. So inhibitors of this inter uh, binding site would have a double whammy of a inhibition. It abolishes the BRCA2 binding of RAT51, RAT51 but also RAT51 self-association. We used fragment-based drug discovery as the primary tool on that and this uh, preparatory, preparatory work here was published uh, already five years ago where we uh, show by taking Archeal RAD-A as a surrogate for RAT51, we could generate a robust crystallographic system and by doing this cool chimeric RAT51 RAD-A protein where we took parts of RAD-A to stabilize RAT51, we could generate a stabilized protein by some 8-9 degrees which binds BRC repeat with high affinity and provided us with a highly reproducible fluorescent polarization as, as a primary screening tool. We got lots of fragment hits uh, from Duncan Scott's work uh, by, on thermal shift and uh, uh, ligand-based NMR, followed by crystallogra crystallography uh, in my lab. And we also explored, together with uh, Chris's lab, peptide SAR on this conserved FXXA tetrapeptide, showing that both the phenylalanine and alanine pockets uh, have their particular specificities and rigidifying the peptide could improve the affinity. So what the chemist in Chris's group did, they took the peptides and fragments, they made a chimera out of that, and then with the long medicinal chemi chemistry effort, they came into CAM833, which is our lead molecule with good pharmacological properties. May Marsh and Gerhard Fischer did a heroic effort in solving hundreds of structures of this protein. There are more to come in subsequent papers. And this of CAM833 shows how that fluoroquinoline moiety goes deep into the phenylalanine pocket. We have that rigidifying proline, now with the hydroxyl group for solubility in the middle. There's a methyl group from the alanine going to the alanine pocket. And then we have here a chloromethoxyphenyl group that goes into this oligomerization, oligomerization group where the self-association epitope of RAT51 goes as well. So we know where it binds and we could show by, by uh, biophysics, this was done by Tommaso Moschetti and Tim Sharp in my group, how CAM833 can inhibit uh, BRC repeat binding and we could measure the 
direct affinity to RAT51 as three, approximately 300 nanomol by ITC. Groups of Ashok Bengtraman and Alessandro Esposito used uh, cell-based uh, assays uh, to demonstrate mechanistic inhibition of RAT51. First of all, on the top here, by artificial DNA double-stranded break uh, uh, induction, uh, we can generate fluores uh, green fluorescence in the cells, but this is abolished by CAM833 on the very top uh, uh, right corner. And on the bottom panels, you can see how RAT51 clustering seen by super-resolution microscopy can be also inhibited by CAM833. So it seems to be doing in the cells what we expect it to do, and pleasingly, as we speculated, it will also synergize with the PARP inhibition. So in these two graphs, you can see either titration of a PARP inhibitor or titration of CAM833, either alone or in the presence of the other inhibitor, and in both cases, we get a shift to the left showing reduced growth of cells when we inhibit both double-stranded uh, DNA break repair pathways, homologous recombination with CAMA33 and non-homologous end joining by PARP inhibit. So we have here CAMA33, which is by no means the first described RAT51 inhibitor, but it is the first where we have good biophysical, structural, mechanistic and functional validation that it really does what it's expected to do at molecular level. So the paper is out in Cell Chemical Biology. Hope this inspires you to read it and uh, I'd be happy to be contacted if you have any questions or comments or queries about it. Thanks for listening.